was brought to my attention and what really was involved uh, about five years ago when I was talking to a high school group in Georgia. And one young sister, a young black girl in her mid-teens, in the question and answer period, she said, Colonel, why would you and your buddies fight so hard to defend a country that has treated our people so harshly? And I gave her a patriotic answer. It's my country. I was born here. But I, I, I didn't like that answer myself. It was too, it was just scratching the surface. There wasn't much substance to it. So I thought about it. And I came up with this explanation which satisfies me, and I think it bears merit, and I think it's true. It is because I have observed, looking at the history of nations going all the way back to Egypt, through Greece and Rome and Italy, France, Germany, Britain, Japan, China, I have never seen or read about a country that has, whose people has shown an ability to change, like we do. For example, it was 1619 when the Mayflower and other ships uh, made landfall at, at Plymouth Rock. And there were women on board the, the boats, 1619. It took 300 years for women to get the right to vote in this country. 300 years, and yet we changed. There was a time when slavery was the backbone of this nation's wealth and prominence and power and so forth. A war was fought that settled the issue, no more slavery. It was abolished, as you know. That did not eliminate the cruelty, the lynchings, the brutality, the separations of families, and so forth. Until, in 1896, Plessy versus Ferguson, the Supreme Court said, as long as things are equal, they're separate, okay. Not anymore. Because that doctrine was overturned with that uh, court case, uh, Topeka, Brown versus Topeka, Kansas. And that was eliminated. Segregation in public facilities was done away with. America changed. 